What's up pop culture and comic fans? This is James with Min Hunter Comics and this guy right here is probably my most requested statue to review but be careful what you wish for because I probably don't like it as much as you guys want me to. Before we dive into the review and backstory, I got an interesting story about this piece. This is actually the exclusive version that I got from Sideshow's website. In some sort of weird mix-up, I did get the exclusive version, and it does say exclusive on the box. However, I'm missing the exclusive head sculpt. This head sculpt right here. So Sideshow has honestly the best customer support known to man. I mean, it's better than Amazon, anybody I know. So I could have easily just called or sent them a message about this, but honestly, I was so lazy that I kept saying, I'm gonna get around to it, I'm gonna get around to it one day. And for whatever reason, I let it go so long that it's now been about two years since I've gotten this piece. So unfortunately, I've definitely missed my opportunity to bring this up to Sideshow, but it was just one of those things. I bought the exclusive version, and I only got one head in the box. All right, guys, let me hit you with a quick backstory on this dude, and we'll dive into the review. Long ago, scientists from Krypton engineered a creature to be the ultimate weapon. This creature, the nameless ultimate, had no purpose except for destruction and made its way across planets before finally being defeated. Buried on the primitive planet Earth, he stirred awake after many centuries and unleashed death. Doomsday was finally stopped by Superman, who seemingly lost his own life in the process. Driven by an instinct to hunt the inhabitants of his homeworld, Doomsday has resurfaced time and time again to threaten Superman and his adopted planet, no matter what gets in his way. As you saw on my last statue review, guys, I now do a segment called What's the Beef, where I let you know all of my problems with the statue, if any, up front. My problems are thus. This statue has some terrible seam lines. The base is very lackluster in the paint. The overall paint apps on the entire piece are very one, two, and three toned. His spikes were made a little bit too long and because of that he can't fit into a lot of spaces. And the color scheme of the base matches too similar to the color scheme of the figure itself. All right guys, we're gonna kick it off by talking about this base. Let's talk about this base, guys. I'm gonna start it with the back of the base, which ironically is where I have most of my problems. I feel like the paint is somewhat lackluster kind of just spot there, kind of a little bit one-toned. They didn't do a great job of differentiating between the cracks. Now over here, we have one of the worst seams I've seen ever. I've had this for two years now, and that has not settled, even with the hair dryer trick that everybody knows. That being said, in this section of the base, they at least added a nice bronze effect into the ground there, and that does get appreciated. I do feel like the front of the base is better than the back of the base. I do like this Batman cowl here. Now this is of the concept of Justice League versus Doomsday, which does work well and I think it captures that really well. Unfortunately, man, you can even see that seam even from this angle too. That seam is brutal. Uh, yeah, but I do think, look at that color. They used, just did like a dark gray to a gray, slight bronzer on top. They definitely could have put more work into this rubble here. You know, that's, maybe that's just me. Here's the Wonder Woman sword, looking good there in the base. And here's the other, the other stand here with additional seam issues. This statue definitely has some seam problems. I also think that, look how similar his foot is to the ground. I think you'll find a theme with this statue is too much of the same color all around. Look at that nasty seam line, visible from every angle. Poseidon's, uh, I just said Poseidon, Aquaman's trident right here, a good aging effect on that. It does look like it's uh, definitely Aquaman's trident from the sea. Um, overall, not overwhelmingly impressed with the base. Uh, I do feel like there was a lot of error here in terms of seam lines as well as color scheme. 
So I'm not mincing my words with this statue, guys. I think a lot of things were disappointing, especially when I tell you how much this thing cost. It was unacceptable for them to do such a lackluster paint job. And the funny thing is, the sculpt is there. A better paint job would have made this pop. I literally think they used maybe three or four colors on the entire base, all from the similar color family. Not good. Very unimpressed. We're going to give this base a 3 out of 10. Alright guys, let's see if we can't get any better. We're talking about the sculpt, the paint, and the colors. Alright guys, let's move on up. Check out this awesome detail in the sculpt of his almost second set of foot. Now you notice right there, see how it's just that it goes from gray to a kind of a grayish green and then to the shiny green. And despite that looking good, I do not agree with the color choice at all there. It is too similar. Moving Moving along up here, we can see these uh, spikes coming out of his knee there. Again, you have to really get in to even tell the difference between what's his knee and what's his pants. Not a big fan. There's his crotch area. Guys, clearly the detail is great here. It really, the issue lies with the color. It's too similar to his actual skin here. If you look, you get close, you can see it's nice detail, but the paint seems to be applied on somewhat lacklusterly. Moving on down here, great detail on the calves. Check out that that weird alien bodysuit that he's got there. They did a great job there, looks good. Check out his back real quick here. That looks solid, solid all around. And there he is bursting out of his containment suit, if you will. Again, I do think that paint looks a little bit plasticky there. I'm gonna move over to his arm here. Now one thing you guys should know, this arm has extreme reach. I do like how they put the uh, Superman cape in there, but these spikes, they take up a lot of space. Now here's what I'm talking when it comes to uh, the paint. There's a lot of room where they should have made different colors, but unfortunately it's variations of the same gray all throughout. Maybe it's because of the material they used instead of polystone, but for some reason it feels and unfortunately looks a little bit fake. Moving along here to his abs, I think that looks nice. There is batarangs stuck in him in a few spots. Moving on up here, check out his pecs. Let's check out this arm. This arm is the one where I notice it the most. That looks very toyish to me. A detailed toy, but a toy nonetheless. I think that that looks extremely one toned. Not digging the color scheme on that. I also don't agree with having the Green Lantern ring on his finger, but you know, still, it's a nice touch. It is kind of interesting that it's on the actual hook rather than his full finger, but it is weird that it doesn't continue all around. Very strange. Check out his back here, the part you'll never really be seeing. Good detail here, especially right there with the sculpt. It is impressive that they did all this, except for the head sculpt, in one piece. Uh, definitely a good job. Get in, show you all those spikes. I do feel like the paint needed to be a little bit sharper on the actual spikes. I can see that they basically just added white tips onto the ends. A little bit more detail could have been appreciated in those spikes for sure. Here's another batarang, and here's one pretty you want to talk about nasty seam lines, there's that seam line on the face right there, kind of rough. Good teeth though, I appreciate the eyes. Unfortunately, it does have that more plasticky look rather than the typical stone, polystone look about it. Especially this little hump over his eyes, I think that looks a little bit crappy. The hair going back here, swaying around. Looks decent. This is definitely a statue, guys, where I do feel like it looks better from farther away. The closer you get to this one, the more weird issues you're going to find. And chances are, you might not like what you see. You might find seam lines. You might find that the colors kind of blur together. You might find that it looks a little bit plastic and feels plastic to the touch. Alright guys, so a little bit similar to the base. My big issues aren't so much with the sculpt. I actually think it was sculpted well even though they used a crappier material. Polystone would have been better and you could have gotten more minute 
details, but it does look good. It's a realistic elephant hide style material. That being said, the sculpt is there. The paint wasn't there. The paint and the colors, that is. Just looking at just his pants alone, it's the same color all over, and the under part of the pants matches with the top part of the pants, which matches with the metal overlays, which matches with his skin tone, which matches with his spikes. It's like you have to squint your eyes to see what you're looking at here. I have several issues with the midsection where he comes out of the pants. It looks like they just plopped him in there and didn't do a great job. The colors on the back here are identical to the rest of the statue. So guys, we're actually going to give the sculpt the deserved 8 out of 10. And it can't do any better than that. The paint, we are unfortunately going to give it a 5 out of 10. And for the colors, we're going to give a 3 out of 10. Let's see if he can't get any points back with design and pose. So right off the bat, I do think the pose is very good. It's a great lurking doomsday. It totally works for the concept of the piece. It looks like the Justice League has attacked him. It does look very good in that respect. When you look at it, your perspectives go to the right spot. You've got Wonder Woman's sword here, Aquaman's trident there. Batman's uh, cowl right there. It's a very pleasing overall image. Your eye is distributed nicely around the entire piece as a whole. And I gotta say, this statue, the Superman cape was a nice touch, not only just because the color dramatically needs it so badly on this piece, but it does look really good and it helps with the pose really well, and I like how they fit it in his hand. This pose is an easy 10 out of 10. Design, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit different here, guys. Like I said, I've had this for two years, and I still have a centimeter pop of seam line from where his feet go into the base, and that's even after doing the old hair dryer clip to warm it into place even better. So I don't know what the hell happened in design there. That's completely ridiculous. I also think that these batarangs are held into Doomsday sheer by wishes. A sharp breeze knocks those batarangs out of him. I don't like friction fit. I don't understand why that couldn't have just been a plug in. That would have looked better. Kind of a weird choice. Also, maybe a little bit of blood. That would have been nice. Just like my Killer Croc statue, this has a really nasty head seam. Goes all along the side of the neck, and it is pretty unforgivable. Especially since I didn't get that second head. <laughs> Come on. But that being said, the weight is distributed nicely and it hasn't leaned or toppled over like that through the years. So I think we're gonna give the design a six out of 10. By now you probably think I don't like this statue and that's not true. I actually do like the statue a lot and that's because we're about to talk about coolness and likeness is extremely cool. It is one of the cooler statues I had in the room and before I got my Brainiac, my Dark Side, and all those other crazy ones, this was the most eye-grabbing piece that I had in my room. I'm really glad that they decided to do a dynamic pose on him rather than having him just stand there. That makes the piece even cooler. I know some people don't like how hunched over he is because he would be a lot taller if he wasn't hunched over, but I think it saves a little bit of room and I actually prefer the look because of it. This statue looks great when you're far away from it. It looks amazing as you enter the room or as you first see it because it's so striking. The pose, the giant size that it is, it just looks great. Not to mention the likeness. I mean, this is definitely Doomsday. There's no question about it. He's holding Superman's cape. He's got those crazy eyes and teeth and all the spikes coming everywhere. Clearly, we're going to give the likeness a 10 out of 10. But we're also going to give the coolness the 10 out of 10. Let's talk about proportions real quick. And I'll put up the actual measurements over here. It is very accurate to a quarter scale. Sometimes sideshow maquettes aren't completely accurate to a quarter scale. However, this is a quarter scale and it does work well with the rest of my statues. I probably won't sell it because I think it does look well with the other statues so well. So good job sideshow for making it an accurate quarter scale. It does have some difficulty fitting into places. His spikes and this Aquaman trident and everything, he's wide, he's deep, he's pretty tall. So you gotta find a good spot for him, for sure. I usually like having my statues very close together and I can't totally do that because of him. So the biggest thing with proportions, there's definitely 
some ways that you could have had his arms to avoid it taking up so much space. And I would have appreciated this Aquaman trident to not be jutting out so much. So guys, we're gonna be given the portions an eight out of 10. Now, unfortunately, just as he was gaining points back with me, he's about to lose a lot more points, guys, because we're talking about the price. This statue is decently over $1,000. With shipping and tax, woof. Not to mention, the box this came in was too large for the actual statue itself, so good luck storing that. I think they priced this statue if it was perfect in paint sculpt and material. So normally, if this was polystone like all the other statues, if this was true stone and I had those micro details in a little bit better and it didn't look plasticky, if the paint was applied better and if the colors differentiated enough, I would have probably charged what they charged for, but with all those corners that they cut, I would say this is maybe a $600 statue, not over $1,000 at all. In terms of price I've paid versus overall satisfaction with the piece, this is one of the lowest percentages I have in the entire collection. I'm I'm not mincing words, guys. Especially for when it came out, the companion pieces was the Batman premium format, the Wonder Woman, and the Superman, which were all under $600. It was very strange to have double that for this statue. Despite it looking good, it should cost a little bit more, I think, but not that much. I would have happily paid this if they did everything right, but they didn't. We are gonna give the price a rare two out of 10. Guys, this is my review on the Doomsday Maquette by Sideshow. I definitely have my issues with it, and I don't think people talk about it enough. But let's check out his final score. The funny thing is, I'm keeping the statue solely off of just the coolness and the likeness. You can't argue with that. Plus, it looks good in pictures, and it looks good from far away. For that reason, I'm going to be keeping Mr. Doomsday here. Guys, let me know about this piece. What do you think in the comments? Is this one you want to pick up? Is this one you already have? Do you agree with my issues with it? What do you think about the material they used on this? Is it too plasticky looking for you? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, keep on collecting.